Hello and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video, I will be discussing some of the properties of epoxides and the ring opening reactions that they undergo. By the end of this video, the questions that you should be able to answer for yourself are what are the properties of epoxides? How do these properties affect special reactivity? How do epoxides react and open up their rings under acidic or basic conditions? And how can I take advantage of the regio and stereoselectivity of these ring opening reactions? I will be using a lot of terminology from SN2 and SN1 reactions in this video, so if you'd like some more review on that, please go ahead and subscribe, and also take a look at the video on the top of the screen if you'd like some review. In organic chemistry, an epoxide is any compound with a three-membered ring with an oxygen in it. So we can have just this simple epoxide here, the simplest epoxide. And we know that three-membered rings in organic chemistry are very ring-strained, so it's thermodynamically favorable for them to open up. And that's the basis for a lot of these reactions that we'll be looking at today. For example, if we treat this very simple epoxide with sodium methyl sulfide, it's a pretty good sulfur-based nucleophile, in methanol maybe as our solvent, we will end up getting this compound, where the epoxide opens, and we end up with an alcohol, so a hydroxyl group on one side, and then our nucleophile added to the other carbon. So let's take a look at the mechanism for this reaction. We start with our epoxide, and because of the polarity of the carbon-oxygen bond, as well as the ring strain caused by this three-membered ring, this carbon will be electrophilic. So we can have our nucleophile, our methyl sulfide anion, come in, where the sulfur will attack that electrophilic carbon in an SN2-like process, and the bond to oxygen will swing up to the oxygen, opening up the ring and giving us this anion here. And then we can simply protonate that oxygen using maybe the methanol as our solvent, giving us the alcohol as the final product. We could also study a reaction with a substituted epoxide, so the same just three-membered ring with oxygen, and then perhaps we could have a methyl group coming out of the plane towards us here. So this would be an optically active epoxide. It's only a single enantiomer. We could treat this with sodium hydroxide in water, so our hydroxide anion is our nucleophile this time. And we know that because this is an SN2 process, our nucleophile will attack from the less substituted carbon. So in this case, the left-hand carbon is less hindered, and SN2 reactions proceed much more quickly when they are not sterically hindered. So we'll have the hydroxide attack the left-hand carbon, opening up the ring and giving us the diol product. So we have two hydroxyl groups this time. And we also know that since we haven't touched the right-hand carbon, the stereocenter here, that methyl group will be pointing in the same direction as it was before the reaction. So we'll still have the methyl group coming out of the plane towards us. What this means is that the ring opening reactions we're looking at are both regioselective, meaning we can control where in a molecule a reaction takes place, so in this case the less substituted carbon, and also stereoselective, meaning we can control the amount of one enantiomer or diastereomer we get over another. So in this case, this is an enantiomerically pure starting material, and we also end up with an enantiomerically pure product. We can also use a couple of different nucleophiles in these ring openings. So perhaps let's look at this epoxide here, where we have this time an ethyl group going into the page, so that dashed bond. And we could perform a reduction. So we'll, let's take our favorite reducing agent, lithium aluminum hydride, in diethyl ether. And always we have to follow this up with some sort of aqueous acidic workup, so let's just write H3O+. And this will give us this alcohol here, where the ring has opened, and this time our nucleophile was a hydride. So we just have a single alcohol group, as well as the ethyl group, still pointing into the page. So this mechanism should be fairly straightforward. Again, we have our substituted epoxide, and then our aluminum hydride reagent, with our aluminum center and four hydrogens, and that minus charge on the aluminum. If you've watched my video at the top of the screen on reductions of carbonyl compounds, you should know that this bond to the hydrogen will swing up to attack the, again, the less substituted center because it's an SN2 process, 
where this bond to oxygen will again swing up, opening up the ring, giving us this anion, where oxygen has that negative charge. And then in our second step, the acidic workup, the hydronium, so this H3O+, can just pretty quickly protonate that oxygen to give us the alcohol product. If we can use lithium aluminum hydride, we could also imagine using a Grignard reagent or maybe an alkyl lithium reagent. So let's look at this bicyclic epoxide here, where we have the epoxide and then sort of a cyclohexane ring as well. We could very similarly to the lithium aluminum hydride, treat this with methyl magnesium bromide in diethyl ether, and then follow up with our aqueous workup. And since we know that the nucleophile, so in this case the methyl group with a negative charge, will attack from the opposite side as the oxygen, because again we're dealing with an SN2 process, we know that we'll end up with this sort of product here, where we have the still the cyclohexane group, then we'll have the hydroxyl group pointing up, so towards us with the wedged bond, and then this methyl group as the nucleophile again will attack from the opposite side, so we know that this methyl group will be pointing into the page trans to the alcohol. And because we started with an optically inactive compound, we will actually have to write plus the enantiomer of this product, because we will actually form a racemic mixture of both enantiomers. I can draw that enantiomer out here, where we have the same group, the same skeleton, but then we have the stereocenters of the hydroxyl group and the methyl group both switched. So we'll have the hydroxyl group pointing into the page and the methyl group coming towards us, out of the page. But be careful because in both cases, these groups are trans to each other. We will not get the cis product because the reaction is an SN2 mechanism. So those are our ring opening reactions in basic solution. What if we have an acidic solution? Well, let's take a look at it. So we could have this epoxide from earlier, where we have a single methyl group coming out of the page towards us. And let's react this with a solution of sulfuric acid in water. And I will give you the product to start with. We get this diol, so that's from the water attacking, but then we get the methyl group on this carbon here. So this is a slightly different product than we would have expected in basic solution, perhaps with sodium hydroxide. So let's look at how this happens. We start with our epoxide, our substituted epoxide, and we also have our sulfuric acid in solution. So we can protonate this oxygen because that will be weakly basic. We can protonate that oxygen with the sulfuric acid to give us this protonated epoxide here. And now, due to the plus formal charge on the oxygen, as well as the ring strain in the epoxide, the protonated version of the epoxide also has a little bit of carbocation character. So if we were to draw maybe an arrow from the carbon-oxygen bond to the oxygen, so opening up the ring with no nucleophile, we would get this resonance structure here, where we now have a ring-opened version of the epoxide with an alcohol and then a carbocation on this carbon and this is the more substituted carbon, remember. I want to emphasize that this is not a true carbocation because this does not actually open up the ring entirely or else we would see a loss of stereochemistry in our product. However, we do see that our product is an antiomerically pure. So a mechanism that is probably closer to the truth is we have this water molecule in solution and the lone pairs on that water will come up to attack the more substituted carbon in the protonated epoxide. At the same time, in a concerted step, the carbon-oxygen bond will swing up to the oxygen to give us this protonated version of the diol product. And then we simply have another molecule of water come along to take off that hydrogen to give us our diol product. So now we have, in acidic solution, nucleophiles will attack the epoxide from the more substituted carbon, because this is sort of a pseudo-SN1 process. While we don't have a lone carbocation, like a true SN1 process, we do have that sort of resonance structure, or that carbocation character, which means that this nucleophile will actually attack, again, from the more substituted carbon, whereas in basic solution, 
we have closer to an SN2 process where the nucleophile attacks from the less sterically hindered center. So I hope this video helped you learn about the properties and reactions of epoxides in organic chemistry. If you like this video or learn something, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also take a look at my Facebook page at Total Organic Chemistry, as well as my website on the screen. If you're willing and capable, please consider donating to my Patreon page. That helps me to continue creating these videos and additional content for all of you. Thanks for watching.